The last new material that I'd like to take in this chapter is to discuss some of the important points about omeprazole. Omeprazole is sold under a number of different brand names around the world, uh, some of which include uh, Prilosec, Losec, and other names. And it's made for the treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease and peptic ulcer disease, and also in conditions where there's just too much acid being formed in that stomach. Whenever you hear about a medication that's indicated for something, you really do need to find out the safety issues of that something, that, that disorder that the person has, and find out you know, quite a bit more if possible. And I'll give you an example because Omeprazole is oftentimes prescribed for a condition called Barrett's disease, and Barrett's disease is uh, a condition where the esophagus is experiencing precancerous lesions. It's actually going toward cancer, and oftentimes the person uh, describes their disorder as being, you know, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and they don't really know that it is Barrett's disease. They, they haven't been told uh, enough information or that maybe they forgot that information and they just say, oh yeah, I've, um, I've got gastroesophageal reflux disease. And you might think, well, you know, if you just have gastroesophageal reflux disease, we'll just, you know, put you on something else. You're, we've got some natural things here that might be better. Well, that's extremely dangerous uh, because you know, that could actually result in the person progressing as the acid continues to splash on those cells that are already changed and already going toward the cancerous stage that could actually develop into esophageal cancer. And another example is that the omeprazole is oftentimes prescribed for people who have peptic ulcer disease. Sometimes those people who have peptic ulcers will have an erosion all the way down into the artery and then that artery starts to spew blood into their uh, into their stomach. So there's a couple conditions where it's just really really important that the person doesn't get a suggestion for instance to go on some alternative medication. Whenever you hear that the person is having side effects, obviously you need to act, act on that, but your action shouldn't be to just withdraw that medication unless you're a prescriber and unless you know the entire situation of that individual person. Omeprazole is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medications. And in some countries, it's available over the counter and the common side effects include nausea, uh, vomiting, and increased intestinal gas. Uh, other side effects include an increased risk of gastrointestinal tract infections and also increased risk of pneumonia. So what's the reason? Why do you think that the consumption of an basically something that decreases acid is going to result in an increased incidence of infections. Well, remember that the acid is a protective mechanism. It's one of our protective mechanisms for decreasing the proliferation of bacteria, for instance. So as we have less of that protection, or in some instances, uh, omeprazole gives no protection, allows no acid in that stomach. Uh, when we have that condition, there is going to be an increased risk of infections. Long-term omeprazole use also carries with it an increased risk of bone fractures. And what did we say the reason for that was? Remember that the acid in the stomach is necessary for the absorption of some of the nutrients and two specific nutrients with respect to bone health have to do with the calcium and the magnesium. When you have a decrease in stomach acid, you'll have a decrease in absorption of both magnesium and calcium. 
Omeprazole is considered a pregnancy category B in Australia and a C class in the United States. So what does that mean? Well, there's a slight difference in categories in Australia and the United States, but in general, for both categorizations, pregnancy category A is the best class. And you shouldn't expect pregnancy category A drugs to have any effects on the growing fetus, any adverse effects on the growing fetus. Conversely, pregnancy category D is the worst class that's not definitively associated with fetal abnormalities. And pregnancy category X is definitely teratogenic. In other words, it definitely causes abnormalities to the unborn fetus. And different countries have different classifications. For instance, in Germany, they have a completely different classification. So if you're working with pregnant women, you need to learn the classifications that are relevant to the country in which you're working. The bottom line for omeprazole, for instance, is that there are safety issues, safety questions about that medication that should prompt you to go back to the pres prescriber and say, listen, this person is considering getting pregnant or this person has become pregnant and they're on this drug, so do we want to do something about it? And we've already taken quite a bit of other information about omeprazole during the course of our discussions about other things. For instance, we were saying that it did inhibit a couple of the liver enzymes, and as such, there's going to be an effect on certain drugs. So specifically, for instance, there's going to be an increased action of the benzodiazepines, and then there will be decreased action of other drugs. But the idea is not to memorize a long list of drugs that every medication is contraindicated in, but rather to just know that you need to research it as you see that information pop up. And we already know that omeprazole is an irreversible inhibitor of the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump in the stomach. And that means that we're going to have a decrease in stomach acid by about 99%. And the fact that omeprazole is an irreversible inhibitor of that enzyme means that the effects of the medication are going to last a lot longer than the medication is in the system. In this case, the effects of the medication will last up to about 72 hours. And that wraps up the new material of this chapter. In the final lesson of this chapter, we're going to review what we've learned and see how we can apply that information to when we're studying other medications.